Dr. Rita Agarwal, and I request Madam to start her presentation. Thank you. Thank you so much, uh, Shilpa ji. Can you remove this slide, please? My introduction. Yeah, yeah I'm just doing that. The stress actually. This is a new stressor which has been added to our lives. Right. Shall I dismiss it from my side? How do yeah, I? Yeah, you can. Yeah, you can. No, no, no. I won't be able to do it. Please do it from your side. Madam, just close the slide. Okay. It's not gone as yet. Yeah, thank yeah, you. So a very good evening once again, and thank you so much for inviting me to your esteemed institution. Dr. Atya Kaple is a dear friend, and I know many of you at Niri. I am not unknown to Niri. I have visited you several times, and Niri is in my friendly neighborhood. My clinic is just next to Niri, and we have been neighbors for the last 30 years. So it's a prestigious institute, and it's my honor and privilege to present before all of you. I think three years ago, the same month, in the month of June, we had a program at your institute, and here we are again. So as Shilpa ji already mentioned, stress is a big topic nowadays because of the catastrophic pandemic that all of us are facing. But if we forget the pandemic for some time, stress is one of the major concerns and significant factors in the field of psychology. A lot of research has been going on since centuries and there are new and modern researchers also which are talking of stress-related disorders, stress-related disease and disability. Let me give some general examples. We have all heard too many stories on COVID because COVID has been a major disruption in everybody's life. We have lost near and dear ones. People have lost jobs. A lot of uncertainty is hovering on top of us. There is lack of knowledge of what's going on. And we feel a sort of lack of control over, over our lives as to what is going to happen tomorrow. But COVID or no COVID, stress was always there. Let me give you a few general examples of how stress operates. I remember one young entrepreneur who left his job to set up a factory because he was tired of working. So he said, I'm going to do my own thing and be my own boss. So he set up an industry and took loan from the banks and also from private lenders. That's where, that's where all his problems began. He went into severe financial difficulties, which went on and on and on and on for almost 10, 12, 15, 20 years. The gentleman obviously had to get stressed because of the financial irregularities and financial pressures and financial stress. So what, what happened to him? He started banging his head on the wall one day. His blood pressure rose and he landed up at the heart specialist's clinic. And the heart specialist checked him out and said, look, my dear friend, you are still fine. Stop this stress and do something about your mind. Otherwise, you will have a heart attack one day. Or go and visit Rita Agarwal and get yourself uh, counseled. But gradually, as he could not handle his financial difficulties, he did land up with a heart condition and with a lot of high blood pressure and he had a bypass also. But let's take another example. A young lady, very ambitious, who also wanted to do business overseas and in India and did not want a family life. She said, I don't want children. I don't want a family, but I want to work. And she was highly ambitious and achievement oriented. 
so she started her own business and one fine day she met a man whom she liked and she married him that's where all her personal life story began her mother in law pressurized her to have kids she didn't want to have kids which she had made clear but she had one kid then she had another kid and the marriage wasn't going very well so there was a lot of emotional inadequacy between the couple where communication was there but it was purely transactional and the emotional bonding had diminished and there were conflicts and there were emotional heartburns so this lady this young lady developed rheumatoid arthritis at a very young age and that's again all her medical disability started and that was a major dent onto her dreams so as shilpa ji said stress stressors are everywhere in our life as we interact with our surroundings as we interact with our relatives with our family and friends there is a continuous give and take between us and the surroundings and stressors are everywhere so there's financial stress there's marital stress there is stress on the job as well some companies can be highly competitive and the environment so my nephew and his wife worked in a company which is one of the largest companies in oil field services in america and they work across 140 countries and they got selected because the selection process itself is extremely competitive and tough but both husband and wife got in and they said the conditions were so inhuman they never considered emotions it was just work 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 if you had even 105 degree temperature and the call came and said hey get on to the fields wear your boots take the truck and go now they are qualified engineers but they drive snow trucks get on to the field in canada where there is minus 40 degrees and drill the oil fields for oil and they took the experience because the company certificate was very valuable for their job profile but after 2 years the stress was too much to handle and they said before we kill ourselves let's quit so they quit but there could be other type of stresses on the job for example bullying if you have a bad boss oh my god that could be a chronic stress or if you have colleagues which harass you and peer group which could be unsympathetic lately there was a study on academic pressure on medical students in a journal where they mentioned a lot of stress and compromised immunity on medical students bodies and systems because of the academic pressure there are some studies lately on caregiver stress caregivers are people who care for patients of alzheimers parkinsons and such type of chronic illnesses age related geriatric illnesses where the caregiver's life can be cut short by 4 to 6 years if go to 8 years also so stress is everywhere we call them the stressors we we'll, i like to share my slide now and quickly go through some components which when we understand we'll know how to deal with it as well whether it's covid or general life how do i present this but mm-hmm. ma'am can you help me with my slide sharing you need to actually rita uh, first open the presentation on your uh, desktop it's already open it's open on uh, properly uh, you I... must have minimized it na then you go to the share you were showing okay. it now before the meeting you were testing it it was working then so i think i must have closed the sharing yeah How so you you uh, have to go near to the, near the mic button you have the share okay yes uh, yeah, uh, uh, let me stop the presentation can you see that there is an arrow next to the you uh, uh, madam we can see. can you see it now no no, no, no. we cannot madam you will have to open your uh, presentation then only we will be able to see 
we are seeing your uh, uh, laptop or uh, desktop uh, screen but that is showing how do you want to join your teams meeting you want your presentation yeah, presentation may be open but yeah. it may be minimized yeah. huh now yeah. we got it yeah. it has can you see that now please yeah yeah right. just uh, right. Yeah. right right so from stress to de stress is what we are going to discuss today so what is stress i try to give you the simplest of definitions of stress simple significant and very meaningful so stress is a state of disharmony or threatened homeostasis this definition has been given by national institute of health united states there are many other definitions but this is a simple definition which says when your body goes off balance and there is a disharmony then and there is a homeostatic imbalance we can understand that our body is in stress as i talked about multiple stressors stressors could be everywhere personal life work life friendships relationships finance business everywhere so there are acute stressors which are short term and there are chronic stressors which are long term acute stressor would be the sudden death sudden loss an accident a major injury infection illness something like that which is short term but very acute and something like the covid pandemic is part of chronic stress and also part of a catastrophe because catastrophic because it's global and each and every human being on this earth is impacted by it so what is a stress sir it's a threat real or perceived that tends to disturb your homeostasis now the interesting part here is real or perceived this is where we really need to understand what is the meaning of perceived and not real i give you a model which i believe in which is relatively a new model of understanding which mean which includes the entire systems of your body which is psycho which is psychological neuro which is your brain central nervous system the endocrine the endocrine glands and your immune system which is immunology it's called pnei now this is a system which believes that all the systems of the body including the mind talk to each other so there is a cross talk between them and that's how stress gets generated so stress and its resulting disease is not caused by genetics simple factors like environmental pollution or just stress no there are multiple factors involved with the entire mind and body is involved socrates said you cannot split the mind from the body and this was 350 bc so there was a lot of wisdom in people in science earlier but we seem to have lost that wisdom because today's modern medicine and i am not saying this we have specialists like dr gabor mate who's a physician top notch physician i will talk about his book a little bit more later who says there is a medical bermuda triangle going on where medical science modern medical science has forgotten the mind and doesn't talk of the mind at all it only talks of genetics it talks of medicines it talks of if you have a tumor you do a surgery or if you have joint pains you do physiotherapy or you eat a lot of steroids but they never look into the mind of the patient which is the most important dynamic so there is a mind body communication this is where the stress response gets generated what is the stress response it is a response called the fight or flight response yola all national level scientists i'm sure all of you have heard it i'm only repeating what i know and this response the fight or the flight response is actually the stress response and this is put into place in the human body and the animal system by nature by evolution where the mind and the body communicate with each other so it says you control your emotions and thoughts your emotions and thoughts affect your brain and your brain controls your hormones the nervous system and the immune system which is what we call as pnei and this is the stress response so in the if you look at the animal life their stress response gets activated only when there is a predator so when they fear for their life they either run or they fight if for their life but 
the human response system, the human stress system has gone haywire because we are constantly putting it in overdrive. And why are we doing that? We'll come to that. Now, so there is a stressor and there is a stress response which activates your entire physical systems. And this stress response actually is a protective device because it helps you save your life from a predator. When there is threat to your life, you either run away or you save yourself, you protect yourself. But unfortunately, this same protective stress response can become dangerous when you put it in overdrive and we don't check it. Why? Because there is a processing system between the stressor and the stress response, which is your mind. We call this the cognitive processes. So there are perceived thoughts, perceived threats, thoughts and emotions which go on in your mind. Now, this whole psychical system is not just a conscious system, but also an unconscious system. If you go into the psychodynamics of the mind, then um, we believe that 80 to 85 percent of your mind is unconscious and just about 10, 15 percent of it is conscious. So your emotions may be coming from your unconscious mind. But what is this unconscious? Since we have less time, I will not dwell too much into it. But the unconscious is like a reservoir. It's like a boiling pot, which contains all your past memories, your desires, your emotions, your thoughts. And your past memories may have traumas, may have childhood programming, childhood conditioning. Whatever your parents have thought, taught you, and whatever you have learned is all part of your unconscious mind. Why is it unconscious? The question arises, why is it unconscious? So unconscious means we have repressed it. And why have we repressed it? Because it is unpleasant and threatening. So things which we find unpleasant and threatening in our life get repressed. And that's where illness gets created because this unconscious mind throws up a lot of things and impacts your behavior at the conscious level without you knowing it. Now, being unaware of your own emotions, I am angry, but why? What makes me angry? I have fears and anxieties, but why? What makes me fearful? There could be, as we talked about, real fear. When there's a predator, there's real fear. But we have a lot of imaginary fears. And the human imagination runs wild. People with panic disorders, anxiety disorders, even during the COVID times, I can tell you people are fearful of what if I get COVID, but you haven't got COVID. There was this lady who called me up to say her husband con got infected with COVID, went to the hospital, came back and was is happy and cured. But she still lives in constant threat of him falling sick again. And she is so dependent on him because she's partly paralyzed. So her life depends on her husband and that's where her fear. So this is called a perceived threat. There is actually no threat. The husband has come back happy, sound, physically fit, but the lady is in constant threat. Another reason is we are so much into the materialistic world and so much into the rat race, if I may call it, that we have created anxieties and stressors for ourselves knowingly and unknowingly. For example, a mother would be stressed if her son didn't get into IIT. A mother would be stressed if her child lost 10% marks. And we see children who are trying to fulfill the expectations of their parents and trying to lead the life which their parents want them to lead. Why? And I said, what about your own life? So. Just to inform you, since we are on the topic, the mental health of our children of India is at high risk because teen suicides in India are the highest in the world. And I'm not exaggerating. We have government statistics on this to prove this. So why are we putting so much of pressure on our children? Because we fear somebody is better than me. So we have created artificial stressors like competition, name, fame, status, and we peg our ego to it. So if my neighbor has a better car than me, I'm under anxiety and negative emotions. 
if somebody does better than me i am at stress if somebody gets a promotion and i don't then i'm under depression so this this type of a play goes on in the mind and we put the stress response in overdrive this is the point i want to make we never relax the body now how do we know that the stress response is activated there are very simple signs and symptoms if you are a little bit aware of your body you will know like your heart will beat faster it will pump faster your pressure will go up you will start sweating you might start uh, some dryness in your mouth and there could be an itch on your skin there are signals signs and symptoms which the body continuously throws up we have to be aware of it and one of the main stressors for the human being is emotions because emotions actually are your gut intuitions emotions attack you at the gut level they don't attack you but they inform you and many times the body is stressed because the body is throwing up the stress response but the mind is unaware of it the mind is unaware of it because we have lost touch with our guts so we say get in touch with your gut it's giving you a message it's throwing up an emotion it's your intuition and it has a message for you get in touch with it so get in touch with your emotions be aware of your stress response and the thoughts going on in your mind let's go to the five negative emotions which are of utmost importance one is anger anger is a reaction to loss i've lost money i've lost my job i've lost my relationship i've lost a friend so i'm angry there's a frustration sense of frustration fear is of losing what if i lose during covid the fear element has gone very high what if i get covid what if i lose a dear one what if i lose a relative so there is fear all around us sadness this is very important helpless reaction to loss helplessness there's a lot of studies on helplessness when the mind begins to feel helpless this is where you get into depression and that is a most negative state to be in where you're likely to contract some illness or a disease pride is excessive attachment to ego this is what we have been talking about when you peg your ego to your achievement to your material achievements to your aspirations to external factors and not to how happy you are so there was this person who asked him are you living in the same house do you have the same car so he says why don't you ask me if i am happy as i am you should ask me are you happy i would say yes i am happy so what's your problem jealousy is when others are benefited and i am not these are the five negative emotions we must take care of how do we take care of the emotion what do we mean by taking care of emotions this is interesting you must understand that there is lot of work being done in scientific laboratories in united states by the honorable shri dalai lama he is a very scientifically oriented man and he has written a book in collaboration with daniel goleman who is a very famous psychologist the name of the book is destructive emotions and he says there are 87000 destructive emotions how does he come to such a massive figure even i was amazed 87000 destructive emotions how he defines it is the first definition which i gave you about national institute of health that stress brings in disharmony or loss of balance and homeostasis that is the exact definition of shri dalai lama a negative emotion is something which makes you lose your balance and equilibrium now you'll be happy to know that eastern philosophies in comparison to western philosophies do not talk of happiness eastern philosophies like hinduism buddhism do not talk of happiness they talk of harmony they talk of equanimity they talk of balance and homeostasis that should be your ultimate aim and not happiness when you are able to keep your mind and body calm and in a balanced perfectly balanced state that's happiness for you 
neurologists have found out that there are 60,000 thoughts which cross our minds daily. Imagine if all of them were negative. What would happen to your mind? Are you going to be stressed? Definitely. Now let's come to the transforming and healing part. I must talk about one Mr. Two, three neurologists. One is Hans Selle, who wrote a book called The Stress of Life in 1956. He was the one who introduced the word stress. And he says what we know as all the disease formation due to stress, they are known as diseases of adaptation. What today in modern language we call as lifestyle diseases. So there's rheumatoid arthritis, there's cancer, there's blood pressure, there's heart, heart condition, there's diabetes, there's multiple sclerosis, there are tumors. All these deadly diseases are based on chronic stress, unattended and unhealed. There is another uh, famous uh, neurologist from Canada. His name is William Osler. In 1892, he had said that rheumatoid arthritis is based on your autoimmune system, which gets hijacked due to chronic stress. Another doctor which I've been talking about, about is Dr. Gabor Mate. He's written a beautiful book called When the Body Says No. He says people who are not able to say no in their real lives. So they can't say no to demands. They can't say no to their mothers. They can't say no to their husbands. So they keep on working and keep on serving and keep on doing things with a smile on their face. So they are non-assertive. They are submissive people. They suffer silently. They don't express their anger. They suffer silently and he says when they can't say no with their own speech, the body one day says no, enough. And that's where they develop rheumatoid arthritis, multiple sclerosis, tumors, general arthritis and variety of cancers because the body gives up ultimately because the mind is not able to say no. It's a very beautiful book. And this is his formula for health. Dr. Gabor Mate, who says health rests on three pillars, the body, the psyche and the spiritual connection. He emphasizes the spiritual connection. And he says to ignore any of them is to invite imbalance and disease. Now, how do we take care of each one of them? Oh, this is one of the latest theories going around for the last 20 years, which is known as neuroplasticity. And this is Rick Hansen. And he's written a book called Neurodharma. There are a lot of other people working on uh, neuroplasticity. And this has been highlighted during COVID times. That your brain is not rigid. Your brain is has a lot of plasticity. And as your brain changes, your mind changes. As the mind changes, the brain changes. And you can use the mind to change the brain to change the mind. This is such a fantastic theory. So they say this is not the age for Darwin's survival of fittest. But this is the age for adaptability. So people who are able to adapt, ad adapt themselves effectively to the new norm, wear their masks, sanitize their hands, maintain a distance, avoid crowded places, they will survive. And the ones who cannot adapt to the new norms will perish. Like the dinosaur, even with how much weight does a dinosaur have? Maybe 100 kilos or 100 tons. And it vanished from the face of the earth because it could not adapt. So neuroplasticity, it's time for a change is the latest theory going on where they say, do not despair. You can change your brain. You can change your mind. Let's talk of a few more points of components of how to bring in transformation and healing. So we have a very powerful intellect. Do we use it in the proper way? We have a logical thought process, which is objective. It should be objective and positive and not subjective because your subjective thought process comes from your unconscious. And there could be a lot of negativity there because it's a repressed material. But when you, all of you are scientists from Neri, that's so beautiful. So you know what objectivity is and subjectivity is. So when you use your objective thought process, you will be able to solve a lot of problems. Think less, understand more. This is the time not to overthink. So there are some people who have this 
my mind goes on ticking and it doesn't stop. No, stop it. Understand more. Self-reflection, self-awareness, owning yourself, taking control. As I mentioned earlier, people who feel helpless get more stress than people who take charge of their lives and say, I can do something about it. I can solve the problem. Let me take charge. Let me be responsible for my own health. Let me be responsible for my own body and my own mind. Understand your strengths and weaknesses and build on them. Understand your necessities, your needs, your bare necessities, your needs, your desires, your expectations. No secrets from yourself. This is where you tap into the unconscious and try to find out what, what are the secrets which my mind is harboring? What is there in my past? Why do I keep bringing the past? And everybody says, live in the moment, live in the present, forget the past, forget the past. Don't harp on the past, but why do I keep going back? So when you become more aware of your internal secrets and you realize, am I living a genuine life? Am I happy? Is this the way I want to live my life? Am I programmed to live like this? Was I conditioned by my parents to live like this? Then you must have heard of the monk who sold his Ferrari. When he realized his true self and his true nature, he just gave up everything. He threw up the material world and went into happiness and enlightenment. Now, the main point is emotional competence because we believe your emotional problems are the main sources of stress in your life, which means they are the main stressors. So there are three things here, reducing negative emotions. You must have methods, cultivate methods for remaining calm and relaxing your mind. Cultivate some methods, whatever methods, there are hundreds of them in the market. Producing positive emotions like gratitude, self-care, compassion, empathy, kindness, pro-social behaviors, having compassion for yourself and for others. So producing negative emotion, uh, producing positive emotions. The third is converting emotional energy into constructive actions like creativity, having meaningful work to do, creating a purpose for yourself in life. And they have found that one of the main sources of happiness is not money, not wealth, not materialism, but having a meaning and purpose in life. When I feel I'm leading a meaningful and purposeful life, I'm a happy human being. When I'm putting my creativity to use and generating something for the benefit of society, I'm a happy person. So if I have a lot of emotional energy, I must convert that into constructive actions and proper expression of emotions. People who express their anger actually have more survival value than people who repress their anger. So we are talking of a balance balance between how much to suppress and how much to express. This is a very tricky point and it's not easy. So emotional balance, no extreme emotions. They say never allow an emotion to run away with you, even if a positive emotion. There was this gentleman who was announced for Padma Shri. He died on the stage with happiness. Then there was this gentleman whose lottery ticket, he won the lottery ticket. His his ticket of lottery won and he died because of happiness. So no extreme emotion because emotion is energy. There's a rush of blood sugar which gets pumped into your heart and to your muscles and into your whole systems. As I told you, it's a psycho, neuro, endocrino, immunology. And there's a, this is the entire system of the mind and body which gets activated in the stress response. Another uh, gyan which I'm giving is being in the action mode, duty without expectation, because if we keep doing what is what needs to be done. So they say, don't do what you expect to do, but do what is expected of you to do. So what does the environment expect me to do at the moment, even in COVID times? Ask the question, what am I expected to do? Do that. And of course, remain in the action mode, which is duty. Just give you a small list of this is a small list. It could be an endless list of stress busters where you take care of your body, your mind and your spiritual connection. So take first thing is take control, be responsible and make the right choices. 
walk for at least 30 minutes or any other exercise for 30 minutes. Sleep for at least seven hours. They say sleep deprivation is a killer. We all know stress is known as a silent killer. And those who have ex experienced it can vouch for it that it is a silent. It's a hidden stress which manifests itself in a disease. And you don't know because you're not aware. <clears throat> Eat nutritious food. Then comes the psychological part, which is think and speak and do positive things. Resolve your emotions. Don't sleep with a negative emotion at night. You may be angry. You may be jealous. You may be fearful. Relax yourself, calm your mind and then go to sleep. So resolve the emotions. Me time, connect to self, talk to yourself. <clears throat> if there's nobody else you can talk to, talk to yourself and have time for yourself where you do self care. This is my time. I do what what I want with it. Meditation, breathing exercises, chanting, anything. This helps you empty your mind. <clears throat> there has to be a time during the day when you meditate for 10 minutes, 15 minutes or do deep breathing exercises or at least chanting. It really throws out all the thoughts from your mind. Connect with friends, talk it out. So the social connection is important. Pro-social behavior, we call it. Then the spiritual connect is good values, good character, good virtues. You must have this. So when you do your dharma and you remain ethical and moral, you have less stresses, certainly. Say a prayer of gratitude. So be kind and compassionate to yourself. And thank you so much for listening to me. Thank you. Thank you, Madam. How do I come back to the screen? This has been such a lonely talk. <laughs> uh, we are really very thankful to you, Madam. And, close your uh, presentation. Just close it first. Yeah. So I, my screen is open now. Close your, close it. Presentation. Your PPT, just close it. Okay. Stop sharing. Yeah. Yes. It's done? Yes. yes All right. Thank you so much. Thank you. I'm open to questions now because it's a very, very complex subject. It's not a simple subject and it's a silent killer which silently impacts your systems and we are not aware of it. Uh, Madam, the thing is that people know that this is not good. What we are taking this negative emotions and everything is not good, but they do not know how to control it. They cannot start with it. So can you just suggest few tips how to start with uh, getting control of yourself? See, let, let me talk about it in a simpler way. Your body will always throw up some signs and symptoms. Like you'll have your pulse rate going up, sweating, sweaty palms, some headache, some stress. You say suddenly I have a headache, suddenly I have a neck, neck ache. So there's pain in the neck or there's fluttering of the heart. These are the signs and symptoms. You never ignore them. Never ignore them. So what you need to do? Let's forget the emotion. Let's just take care of the signs and symptoms. Just sit on the chair. Relax your mind and deep breathe. Deep breathe. And chant. If you have a mantra like Om or whatever mantra, that's purely a very personal issue. Just chant that mantra and empty the mind. It's very, very relaxing and it will bring you down to reality. So you have to ground yourself. What is the ground reality? You are alive. You are alive. You're breathing. Your breath is still working. What are you worried about? And what is the big issue about? Then, of course, you have to also find out where this is coming from. Where is the negativity coming from? As I said, get in touch with your gut. So if there's some uneasiness at your gut level, you'll have to actually look at that sign and say, what am I feeling anxious about or angry about? Or what's happening to me? So help yourself identify the emotion. Is it anger? 
Is it fear? Is it sorrow? These are the three main things. Then of course there is pride and jealousy. Am I jealous of something? Mostly it is these three. Anger, fear and sadness. So what's making me angry? What's making me sad? And what's making me fearful? And then the third question. Is it real or imaginary? Am I just making it up in my head? Like a mother who says, I'll be totally ashamed of my friends if my son doesn't get into IIT. Is this real? Should it be real or it's just an artificially created value? This is what we call as a perceived threat. It's not real. I've created it. Will your life end if you don't get into IIT? Will your life end if you don't buy the second car or if you don't buy a BMW? Is it going to be the end of the world? Is it a real threat? So the stress response, which was actually built in by evolution for a real threat to your life, is now being activated by perceived threats, by false values, by false expectations, by false false ideas and emotions. So it is on overdrive. You have to, as Gabor Mate says, the spiritual connection, the psychological clarity is very important. Cut down your expectations. See, what has COVID taught us? Simplicity, materialism is not going to pay. Stay at home, cook your own food, take care of your own self. It has given us back to, people say, we have gone back to Gandhian lifestyle. So good. It's teaching you a lesson. Simplify your life. Aspirations are not bad. Achievement is not bad. Nothing is bad. But don't stress yourself and kill yourself for it. So it depends on your own personal resources, your physical resources, your mental resources, your family resources. Are you putting yourself into stress unnecessarily? Don't do that. So don't kill yourself. So cut down. I told you about the monk who sold his Ferrari. He left everything and went. His million dollars he left and went. Because he said, it's not worth it. I'm happy without it. So what makes me happy? And is it genuine or it's a very artificially created thing in my mind? But any more questions, please, I'll be happy. I should not go on because it's a beautiful subject and I can really go on on it. Anybody else wants to ask anything? I is think there is, there is a question. Yeah, Hello. Yes, please. Yeah, yeah. I'm Sanjay Mehta here, man. Thanks for a very good uh, stress buster talk. My question is, madam, that uh, nowadays children seems to be less tolerant. Is it so or we are not able to tolerate them? What is the case? <laughs> yeah, it's both sides, actually. <laughs> children have a lot of knowledge and information because of technology. But I would agree that they don't have the wisdom. Yes. So the guidance from parents is absolutely essential, but the methods of guidance have to change. Because today's child will not listen to you if you boss over him. Right. And he will not listen to you as if you are, you have more knowledge and I have less knowledge because I have Google and I have internet and I know everything. So if you treat him like a friend and say, let's chat, let's have a talk. Discuss it out, converse it, and help him clarify his mind because I can tell you that children are very confused. Right. And they are not on the right lines. Mm -hmm. They have wrong thinking. The peer group pressure <clears throat> is very high. So they would trust their peers more than they would trust their parents. This is a right. fact. Because peers are doing the same thing they are doing with technology, social media, blah, blah, Google. And they, have, they share the same knowledge. And many of us from the older generation are unaware of what's going on. So we don't know. So right. there are two things which parents should do is 
know the life of your child. Okay. Who is he talking to? What is he talking about? Who is he interacting with? What are his activities? How can you do this? If you pass a judgment and be critical, he will shut his mouth. No, but they all have got mobile screen locks, madam. It's difficult to know whom they are talking and what they are doing. It's no, no, no. Be a friend. Be a friend. Yes. If you just just say, let's let's look at like a conversation with a little with your child, and say, so who are the friends in your class you like? So he'll say, I like this, this, this. Oh, very interesting. So what are the hobbies of this guy? Ma'am, I tried. He said, don't try to bluff me. I know what you want, but you won't be able to get. I oh. know what you're trying to extract. <laughs> How old is the child? Uh, he is now in the class 12th. So this generation is very smart, ma'am. These tricks uh, don't work. I tried. Now you said, ma'am, that we should not put pressure on child, right? I tell you my example only. Yeah. Um, I also agree that we should not put. During exam time, once I tried, you know, on Monday his paper was there. So he was not picking up the book. The social studies paper was there. So I said. Today I will not tell him. Let him pick up the book and study. Ma'am, up to 11 o'clock I waited in the night, but he didn't touch a book at all. Now it's it's very difficult. I mean, you say on one hand you feel that okay, you should not pressurize the children, but uh, if you don't enter, they don't just. Uh, I mean, it's very difficult. See, let me. Uh, this is part of parenting and disciplining. When should the parenting and disciplining start? we talk of a word called autonomy discipline should never be external discipline should be internal how should i make the child self disciplined when should this right. process start in childhood not in 10th 11th when he is at the peak of competition right self but he says i had already studied there is no need to study now I, okay. my thing is over Okay, so you say we'll see your results. Good luck. Yeah, unfortunately, results also come good. So, but <laughs> <I> then <don't. laughs> what are you giving about? <laughs> I love that. He's so done well. You have the results in front of you. You should be a happy parent. No, yeah, I am happy that way. But the thing is, you know, they don't listen to us. That is the issue. When we are saying for uh, they're good only, but that is a It's very difficult to. Oh, children will not listen to you. Listen to you. You have to be just a friend with them. Right. Enjoy okay. their company. Play with. I'll tell you one more tip of. Take a child. If you want to talk to a child, take him out for dinner or lunch. Yeah, that. Uh... Or take him out for an ice cream. Or take him out for a drive in the car. Then chat with him. He'll open up. Okay. Not, not at this general. This generation is very smart, ma'am. I, I don't know. <laughs> It's uh, they but pick we, the things better than us. I mean, what uh, they at least uh, no, decade ahead of us. But I can tell you one thing that we have as parents, we have to be smarter. Right. <laughs> we have to be them at their game. Actually, Rita, in continuation of what Sanjay asked, uh, you know, I uh, always wonder that uh, you know uh, this concept of. Uh, being a friend to your children is this where we are going wrong you know so yes. when we were kids we were very disciplined if mummy or papa said no means no they never yes. sat down and explained to us beta tere ko ye isi liye karna hai kyun kyun x y z z z but we we try to explain to our children we try to make them understand you know we try to treat them as an equal which sometimes at the back of my mind i wonder is this where we are going wrong no uh, uh, dr atya i agree with you let's let's go back a little when the ch child is the formation years are the first 5 to 6 years all the nurturing is finished by then mm -hmm. so if mm -hmm. you inculcate certain values in the first 5 years you will see the difference so we say when he grows up we will do this no put the values when he is a child in the first 6 years so what we do with the the child begins to walk pick up your shoes put it in this corner thank you very much pick up your dress dump it here thank you very much make him responsible in the first 6 years and put limits this is not allowed in my house 
this is how we think this is proper this is good this is bad this kal this theory this nurturing has to be done in the first 6 years and then we give control to the child and say now you decide you're a big boy you can think help him in the thought process see let's then don't give instructions instructions are it's like your worker who joins your office so you say in 3 months we are going to instruct you and teach you the job here then you are supposed to pick up and be responsible then i'm not going to instruct you and say do this do that you should know your job so we train the child in the first 6 years and then we say now be responsible what is right what is wrong think let me know share his thought process by friend i don't mean a peer group friend is very different it's friendliness you cannot dictate after a certain time you cannot dictate you have to take the friendly approach but of course be a parent and i'm saying children need guidance and they see guidance from a counselor but not the parent <laughs> yeah because the parents become too judgmental yeah and i don't blame i don't blame the parent i mean you have your own stresses and strains so you are trying to do your best for the child but anyway i mean does it would dr mehta mr mehta agree with me yeah yeah actually the thing is ma'am uh, that is okay but uh, nowadays you know it's very difficult i mean they they want total independence they don't want interference uh, howsoever you try you know they will always say that uh, for us independence is supreme you know no so there is one law which you must apply and that is when you earn your own money mm-hmm. you will create your rules till you are eating my money i will dictate the rules So they say it's my way or I way. If you say you want phone, I want iPhone. Otherwise, I don't want. It's fine with me. No issues. Don't give. Don't give. Don't no, give. That is okay. Yeah, but I'm I'm saying this is how they are now. It's very difficult. I mean, it's easier said than done. It's okay to be friendly with them, but it's uh, this generation is too smart, ma'am. No, uh, you have to put your foot down. You cannot get bullied and oppressed by children. Definitely put your foot down. and also you can threaten them if they are going on the wrong lines cut off their money say this is my money and i'm not giving so what happens today parents are held to ransom because you have one child yeah that's true <laughs> and you have given him the best and you have pampered him uh, yeah that is also somewhat yeah so you even I- yeah mm-hmm. you say i'm capable we have struggled hard we have come the hard way now i have money so i want to give my child the best don't do that right. he will not know the value of money until he works hard yeah yeah so what, what my nephew has done is with his little daughter he's they live in luxury and they live in dubai but he has told her if you want to continue to live in luxury in future work hard and earn it papa is not going to pay for it i am there only for a few more years then it's your life your career your hard work your money and your lifestyle and he talks like this with her mm mm-hmm. this is they need to be talked in a harsh way and put in their place that don't spend my money and live in luxury right now i'll do it because i am happily doing it but i won't do it forever right and earn your money and do it iphone lena go you know what so what happens in we are coming to the western culture where summer holidays winter holidays children go and join jobs right they don't sit at home and right. they earn their own money and spend it the way they like mm-hmm. we pay for them Indians molly coddle their children and pamper them and spoil them and bring them up with lot of love and affection and then suffer. Yeah. But ma'am, their society is totally different. I mean, there even if yeah. ch- I mean rich children work, so the dignity of labor is there. Here it is not so. So there are a lot of 
we should bring in that dignity of labor and say go and go and work so my he says you send me to us i'll work no problem so let him work go and earn some yeah. money and come and buy your iphone yeah, yeah that's true <laughs> actually that's the way you have to talk to them right right thank you ma'am all right thank you so much thank you so parental pressure is something which most of you are facing maybe we can take it up as a separate subject yeah yes, that yeah, is one of the unending topic <laughs> sorry parenting is an unending topic but see why are our children suffering and why is the teen suicide so high in our country is the highest in the world yes we need to really look into our parenting styles we look, we need to look into the academic pressures why and this age group is the teen group it's 15 to 30 15 to 29 and one more question how prevalent adhd is in today's generation i mean you must be having a lot of uh, uh, cases yeah adhd is growing due to multiple factors but uh, when we say that the attention span of children are less today it's not adhd right it's attention span because a classroom is also 45 minutes an attention span also is 35 40 45 minutes not more than that but that is not adhd right, AD, right. adhd has a neurological aspect to it yes uh, which uh, poor attention span and poor concentration is not adhd yeah yeah that i know that's true so shilpa so, madam can yeah yeah uh, thank you madam uh, just i would like uh, people to take take home message is just uh, don't uh, go with the negative emotions try to produce positive emotions that what we have learned today and the brain changes as the mind changes that is also very important so we can change our mind we can change our brain both things can be changed with the help of each other do not despair you can change your mind that is very important do not overthink there should be self awareness self control there should be no secrets from ourselves so we should know exactly what we are feeling what we are uh, angry of what we fear what are our why we are sad so if we are aware of this we will be able to manage our stress uh, in a better way we should do our duty without expectation there should be balance between our suppression and expression and the stress buster as you have said that walk for uh, or do some exercise for 30 minutes and uh, take a good adequate sleep uh, take control make choices these are really very important things and of course as we have been uh, learning from our uh, old uh, mythologies and everything meditation prayer of gratitude good virtues they will be always there to help us and guide us thank you madam for just highlighting these points and helping us to come out of this stressful situation thank you very much thank you it was my pleasure thank you so much dr atya yeah dr atya has to be complimented because as we started uh, discussing about this stress uh, actually dr rita has shared some of your leaflet with uh, us so i said that we should have her talk uh, uh, for our employees also and dr atya immediately she contacted you and uh, arranged this program thank you dr atya madam also for arranging this program thank you so kind of you and thank you dr ashish sharma for uh, giving this platform to us thank you okay thank you so much okay bye 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 god bless all the best to all of you